business here. I'm John Kutch from the uh, Thorium Energy Alliance. And uh, before we get started, I'll just uh, want you to make sure that uh, you follow our guests' uh, rules and policies here. So, you know, wear your badge at all times. You know, this is the Olympic Mons conference room, and uh, we're going to have some breakout sessions and uh, lunch, but they're all going to be around here. Uh, I believe you figured out that there's restrooms in the back and in the lobby. Uh, Kat Allman is our go-to person. Ellen Coe was a kind person who checked you in. I apologize if you had any trouble checking in. Some folks' names uh, were left off the list, and uh, some folks uh, are just showing up. So, you know, there you go. So, uh, there's uh, website connectivity, obviously, here, but uh, we're going to ask that you uh, refrain from you know, surfing the web and Twittering and getting on Facebook and stuff while people are talking. It's just, you know, not very polite and, you know, we're here to learn some stuff. I hope you can keep the attention on the speakers. If you need to blog that bad, maybe you could go out into the alley restaurant over there. And uh, the address, you obviously found it, but the address is on here and there's taxi service and stuff. So it's, uh, they're very, very kind host to us so far. And uh, there's a the other thing I want to let you know is that uh, the uh, the uh, programs were, uh, were were printed up by uh, Peter Heimdall of uh, Rickman Printing in De Des, Moines, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. He's donated a ton of printing services to us. That was awfully nice. And uh, as long as I got this in my hand, I'm going to point out that. You know, these schedules are sort of like the uh, suggested retail schedule. You know, things <laughs> things are bound to change, and one of the changes are uh, Maurice Gunderson from CMEA Capital and uh, New Scale Nuclear uh, will be talking uh, more around 2 o'clock or so today, and uh, instead uh, Jim Kennedy from Wings will be uh, speaking uh, a little bit earlier, more like in Maurice Gunderson's uh, spot there. Other than that, uh, the schedule's actually holding together pretty good so far, so what the heck. <laughs> That's all right. All right, so enough of that little bit of uh, bit of housekeeping. I want to uh, now get on with the, the business of what we're here for. Again, uh, I want to welcome you. This is the Thorium Energy Alliance Future of Energy Conference, the second one in about six months. We had the first one ever uh, back last October at the uh, Gallaudet University in uh, Washington DC and we spent some time while we were there talking to a few uh, political folk and it was a good gathering it was uh, it was organized shortly after we uh, put the uh, Thorium Energy Alliance together Thorium Energy Alliance is a 501c3 not-for-profit corporation uh, a lot of people ask me why the website is thoriumenergyalliance.com. Well, that's because we're uh, we're run like a business and not like a not-for-profit. We intend to, uh, and we can talk a little bit more about that later. But the uh, Thorium Energy Alliance is is here to actually produce things, and uh, we're not a, we're not a charity. We're just a, a not-for-profit corporation. So it's a little bit different for you. The uh, um, One of the, one of the oh a uh, little going back a little bit, I want to uh, ask you all, especially you speakers. Uh, I've spoken to almost all of you, but you know if we give you a time, you know five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen, twenty, whatever it is that we gave you, we really really expect you to adhere to that. It's only fair to everybody else, and uh, and it's uh, fair to the folks you know watching at home. You can't watch a forty minute YouTube video, neither can they. You know, so let's try and keep our our thoughts concentrated and and focused and get all the information out there in the time allotted. That'd be awfully great. So, anyways, uh, uh, back to the status of the Thorium Energy Alliance. For those of you who saw the first conference or saw some of the stuff on the internet or on YouTube, you know, our main goals are to. Uh, 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 lay the found work and the foundation so that everything is in place 
so that we can produce an actual molten salt reactor, lifter reactor. I don't know what you want to, you know, how you want to describe it. One of the things that I like to tell people is we're the Thorium Energy Alliance. You know, we're not the Lifter Alliance or the Molten Salt Alliance or the MOX. You know, we don't have a dog in the fight of how it gets executed. We have a dog in Thorium itself, and we want to use, we believe in Thorium, the material and the potential for what it can do. So just to show you that, that uh, but we do, uh, several of us do believe very much in the Molten Salt approach as you can imagine. Uh, we are working very hard uh, to put together new textbooks uh, to teach without students and without future professionals. What's the point of doing all this? We have several educators here, so I'm sure you can appreciate how important that is to put together uh, uh, things like textbooks, uh, a speaker's bureau, just some of the more prosaic things that, that you just we just need to get done. We need to do this unglamorous work if we want to be more than just a talking shop and fantasize about you know floating uh, you know rocket packs and going off into space and stuff. You know what we have to do is get down to the brass tacks. Uh, <clears throat> so we are working very hard uh, to define what what is a lifter or an MSR. You know what is a closed cycle generation system. And uh, to that end, uh, and uh, very, very uh, interestingly, is uh, we haven't been sitting around since the last conference. Uh, we're, we're not much of a talking shop, we're more of a doing shop. So uh, one of the things that I'd like to uh, <clears throat> show you is that uh, you can see some of these handsome guys up here are, are in the room right now. So we have... Uh, Jim Kennedy, I'm in there. Vince uh, Lakowski, who's uh, uh, without uh, him, this conference wouldn't take place. What we have here is uh, uh, us at different universities. So this is where the rubber hits the road, folks. You know, we're not talking about you know theoretical stuff anymore. We decided that if we're going to do this we got to do it right now, that the window of opportunity is very, very small. So uh, in the first conference, we exhaustively explained the whys of thorium. You know, why should we do this? Uh, uh, we had Mr. Morse talk about the moral imperative of doing this. I even gave a short talk about how it's just the right thing to do. Uh, Bob Hargraves, Kirk Sorensen, everybody talked about you know the why why should we do this it's cheaper than coal it's all these other things you know and I believe we've beaten the why horse until it is quite dead we know why we should do it we're all here on our own dime we've all come uh, great distances at a great expense and uh, uh, we've all bought into the why we got the why down so the unglamorous part that I'm asking you all to commit to today is the what, all right? That's the, you know, we're at the what and the how, and that is what the Thorium Energy Alliance is about from here on out. I already know why I'm doing this. You can watch it on YouTube. Very clearly, we all know why we're here. We're here for our grandchildren, for the future, because we like to use cheap electricity. We're just here, some of us, because it's just the right thing to do. You do this hard of work, not for monetary gain especially, but you do this sort of work because you want to do the right thing and be involved with something that's going to make the world a better place. Fine. That's good. We have that. We've checked that off the list. So what I am challenging you with are the things that if you watch Joe Bonametti's uh, several tech talks, Joe Bonametti gets down to it and he talks about the things that now we need to do the unglamorous things like project management. You know, we need to start thinking about who's going to supply the plumbing fixtures. You know, what type of insulation goes on the pipe? Can we use ceramic pipe? Is there something out there? What, how thick should the concrete pads be? Those are the sorts of things where we need to be at now. I believe we can go there with CAD, with open source, with the things that are available to us today. We can always change our minds. But unless we're able to go 
to Senator Dick Durbin or Claire McCaskill or Kit Bond or some of these guys unless we can go and say, here is a plan. This is what it will cost. We know it. We didn't just pick this number out of the sky. This is where the concrete will come from. This is where the rebars will come from. This is our architecture firm. So this is what we're doing. Uh, Jim Kennedy, fin fantastic partner in all this. Vince, Tom Mick, uh, and I have been going to Purdue, University of Illinois, uh, uh, Michigan, Madison, Wisconsin. We're basically going to what amounts to the Big Ten nuclear engineering schools because University of Illinois is our likely candidate to, to uh, be the place where we want to build this molten salt reactor research facility. So this thing, the molten salt research reactor facility. And it's the molten salt research reactor facility more than just molten salt. This thing here, that's what you all want to come and talk about. That little ball right there, okay? And what I'm saying is, we got to start talking a lot more about, you know, these things and these things, these pipes and recuperators and, you know, a heat loop. You know, big deal, you know. Well, that's not exciting. That's not going to get me a Nobel Prize, but it is going to get you to where you want to go, you know. And where you want to go is to have a fully functioning, pre-commercialized research center that has a turbine hall, because what are we going to do if you have an MSR if you don't have anything, any way to utilize that heat, right? So we got to get down to brass tacks, like I say, and that's what we're doing. You know, we're, we've picked up that gauntlet, and we in, invite you to join us on this mission. If you're part of a university or part of a national lab and want to get in on it, I suggest you do, because we're not waiting. So there's some other views of uh, the proposed uh, MSRR. And this is what we've been going around. And we've had pretty good luck getting these universities to accept our consortium agreement. We're doing this as a consortium because these days in the United States, no one university is going to be able to do a project like this by themselves, even though the cost of doing this project is fairly modest. Uh, but uh, what the consortium buys us more than money is political influence. You all know that there's a big, strong NIMBY, not in my backyard. I don't want this crazy nuclear stuff. It's scary. Oh, gosh. You know, but if we can have senators from eight or nine states, so if we can get 16, 17 senators, 20, 30 congressmen to get behind a project like this, that's how we're going to get it done. Cost almost is not the issue anymore with something like this. We need to show the political will. And in order to show the political will, we better start to show that we're serious and not just a bunch of guys who gather and talk about protactinium and all this other stuff. We better start talking about we are going to use the Acme Insulation Company to, to cover our pipes. We know that. That's how much we've planned this out. Okay, so that's my little two, <laughs> two cents worth. That's the mission I'm sending you out. I hope by the end of this conference, you all start to think that way and start bringing some of these solutions forward. The next person that uh, I want to introduce. I just want to talk to everybody about facilities, if you don't mind. Uh, we went oh, through it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think, I don't Are know you if you were. Yeah, I read through the whole okay. list there. Okay, good. Right. Okay. So that that's what we're doing. And this is all available on the website, but now it's a little more clear what the heck it is that was on the website. We've been a little bit secretive about it. Uh, but uh, uh, more facts to come. Now, very importantly, I want to introduce Kirk Sorensen. Uh, Kirk Sorensen was uh, the leading fellow that uh, poked us all to get going on this. So without him, we wouldn't really be here, that's for sure. So. Kirk, if you could all give a round of applause for Kirk, that'd be fantastic. 